Say hello to my subscribers right there. Uh, hey, we we put in a company. We what? We put in that guy right there. It's the best mechanic there. No, but yeah, yeah but, and now he's an influencer. You no, too. No, no. <laughs> Serious. That's one of the best mechanics. Yeah, D and D. Holds law. Codeology. Sparkle cuz. I'm here to enforce Holmes law. Come be great, man. What's up, my guys? How you doing? My name is Mel. This is Holmes Law. Welcome to the channel. If you're new to the channel, welcome also. Please don't forget to hit that like and subscribe. And I do appreciate all the actual comments I've been getting lately. And uh, I know it's been taking me a while to get to this video, but this is going to be how to chart your vendor. Okay, and I'm going to get to that in a minute. First and foremost, I just want to say, you know, guys, please wear your masks. I know it's a hindrance and I know it can be a little, you know, stressful sometimes wearing this, but um, it does make a difference and I just want to say, you know, wear your mask. Right? And with that said, I'm going to wear my mask throughout the video just to, you know, support the actual mask. You know what I mean? Um, anyways, with that said, Today we're going to be charting our vendors. I'm going to show you how to actually do that. This is going to be one of the most important videos that you should actually view. If any at all, this should be it. Okay? Being an apprentice, you should actually watch this. You know what I mean? Okay, now charting your vendor is something that you should learn how to do from the beginning. You know, uh, it's something that you should do every time you step up to a vendor that you have never used. Okay, whether it be an electric vendor, uh, a hydraulic vendor, or a hand vendor. Okay, but I'm going to show you how to do on a hand vendor. You can actually do it the same exact way on an electric or on a, on a hydraulic vendor. Okay, so let's get it started. The first thing you want to do is, being that we already have a 45 degree central mark, is you want to get the 30 degree center mark. Why? Because it's actually a very, you know, basic degree of bend. Okay, you're going to be doing that bend a lot. Now, for you, it might not be a 30 degree. It could be a 15, whatever the case may be. Whatever bend you use a lot and you, you're going to be needing the center of the bend a lot of, those are the ones that you want to put on your bend. Okay, because those are the bends that you use all the time. So I'm going to show you how to do how to transfer over a center of a 30 degree bend onto your bender. But for you, it could be any degree. It's the same process. Okay, and you might want to do, you know, maybe two or three center degree marks. You know, you could do a 60, a 30, and maybe you want to do a, a 22 and a half. Who knows? You know, but I'm going to show you how to do that and how to transfer it onto your bender. Okay, now with that said, the first thing you want to do is grab a, a, a Scrap piece of conduit, okay? You want to grab a scrap piece of conduit, and it can be any length, just so long as it's a length that is easy for you to bend, okay? And um, you don't want to grab a whole length, but you can if you want to, okay? Now with that said, we're going to go ahead and mark it anywhere on the conduit, okay? anywhere on the conduit. For me, preferably just somewhere close or it doesn't really matter. Just so long as that you know that where you're marking it, this is where you're gonna put your arrow, okay? You're gonna actually place this mark on the arrow, okay? And this is important because this mark, we're gonna, this is how we're gonna transfer accurately our central mark back on the actual shoe of the bender, okay? So, and I'll explain in a minute. This mark is gonna go on the arrow and we're gonna bend it to whatever degree you want to bend, okay? For the video, we're gonna be doing a 30 degree bend, okay? So I'm gonna take my actual conduit with the mark that we just placed, okay? And I'm gonna place it right there on the arrow, okay? And now, we're gonna do a 30 degree bend, okay? And we're gonna try to do it as accurate as possible. What I'm gonna do is I'm gonna actually use my level too, my torpedo level to make sure that it's a 30 degree bend. 
I'm gonna bend it in the air and I'll finish it off on the floor, or you can do it on the floor either or. Okay, so for me, I'm gonna do it in the air. Also, for beginners, you wanna learn how to do control bends. Okay, this way you can if that's the way that you wanna do it and it's a way that you can actually control the bend and you're not jerking it. You want to be able to do this bend or any bend when you're bending hand bend when with a hand bender is you want to be able to be able to control your weight down so you can stop whenever you want to accurately. Okay, for me it's under my arm and with my hand position where it is here in the front. And I just use my body weight, so it makes it a lot easier for me. If you're a lot taller, I'm about 5'9. If you're taller than me, then maybe you might be able to get further back on the conduit but with more pressure towards the front. Find a way that you can make a controlled bend instead of jerking on it so much. You also don't want to be leaning on it too fur further back where you're going to bend it too, you know, you're not going to bend it right. It'll end up getting, you know, kind of like oval instead of you getting an accurate bend. Anyways, 30 degree bend. Okay, that's what we're looking for. For you, it can be whatever degree that you choose to put on your bend. Okay, so we're gonna find the center of the bend right now. What we're gonna do is get a 30 degree bend, okay? And we're gonna make sure that it's 30 degrees. Now we can either use a digital level or a torpedo level, okay? Now for me, I'm gonna go ahead and use a torpedo level. Okay, you can't actually, you can't quite see at the moment, but I need a little more bend, okay? So I'm going to put it right back, right back into my bender, and I'm going to go ahead to bend. And that should be accurate enough, okay? Now let me go ahead and check. Okay, great. Now, for me, this is my 30 degree bend, okay? Now, what we want to do after we have an accurate 30 degree bend is you want to get a straight edge, okay? And we're going to do it over at the lab or the table, whatever you like to call it. And we're going to, like such, okay? Just like this, but I'm going to do it on the table right now. And I'm going to mark a straight line across my pipe on one side. Then I'll go over to my other side, okay? And I'll mark another straight line, and that's gonna give me an X right over where the bend is, okay? So let's go over to the table so I can show you exactly what's going on. I'm gonna show you exactly, you can use any straight edge, okay? Any straight edge that you want, as long as that it is straight, okay? You can use a piece of rod. I'm just trying to show you whatever you can use out on the field, okay? Or you can even use a piece of Kindle, okay? Just like such. For me, I'm gonna use my level, okay? Now, you wanna grab your marker, okay? Or in this case, I'm gonna use a pen and I'm gonna go over gonna go over it let me see if the pencil can actually okay and we're gonna do it just like such okay and you're gonna see the mark coming out so let me just zoom in for you okay and you see one part of the mark already there okay and now we're gonna come on to the other side. Making sure that we're actually flat against the, the straight portion of that bend on the other side. 
Okay, and we're gonna go ahead and do the same thing. Okay. Same thing. Now this is a 30 degree bend, okay? Now, you see an X, okay? That X, the center portion of this X is the center of your bend. What you want to do is get your center of your bend, mark it all the way around, try to be as accurate as possible, okay? We're keeping that straight all the way around, okay? Because you want to transfer this mark onto your shoe, okay? Try to be as accurate as possible. Now, we have it all the way around our conduit, okay? Now, we're gonna grab our shoe and transfer over the mark. Okay, so I'm grabbing my shoe. I took the actual stick off the bend just to make it a little more comfortable. And I could actually get this all on the screen. Okay, let me zoom out a little bit. And we're gonna go ahead and place our conduit with our first mark, okay? If you can see here, this is our first mark here where we place it on the arrow. We wanna place that mark back on the arrow so that it's accurate, okay? So we're gonna place it back on the arrow Okay, making sure that it's on the arrow like such, okay? And then, we will, okay, so once we have it on there, hold on one second, once we have it on there, you can see, see the thing is that I already have mine laid out already, so. I don't need to do it again for you guys. But don't worry about this first mark. This uh, this first mark is is some is my 10 degree mark. But um, so this is my 30 degree mark. Okay, I have my first mark lined up with my arrow, and this is my 30 degree mark. So now what I do is make him believe that it's not marked already. I can go ahead and mark my shoe with this new 30 degree mark and you can either take a grinder and etch it in just like this one uh, these other marks are actually these over here is the teardrop which is the uh 45 uh center mark and this is the star for the the back of the 90 stub okay so now we have a 30 degree mark okay and just like I did for other marks, 10 degree marks, you know, you can do whatever you want on here. You can bend any degree that you want and you can transfer over the center of bend mark on your shoe. Now this works for any type of bender, okay? You can bend on any bender, any degree that you want, do like I just did to find the center of it, mark it and then transfer it over onto the shoe okay and that's how you find the center of the bend and that's how you also bend on center okay like when you're doing uh segment bends or concentric bends and you need to bend on center that's how you do it or if you're doing kicks parallel kicks and you have to bend 30 degree bends on center because that's what how you bend kicks when you're doing them parallel and you're not just doing it the measured method, you need to bend it on center. And that's how you do it. You know, that's how you transfer it over to your bender if it doesn't have a mark for it already. Like the 45 degree mark is already there, but 30 and 22 and a half and 60s are not there. So this is how you transfer it over, okay? So this is one part of charting your bender, okay? So, we have the 30 degree mark transferred over. That's one part of charting it. Okay, now for you, charting your bender might mean you still have to chart out the, you still have to do the center of 60 and 10. It depends what it is that you use every day and what you like to, how you like to chart your, your uh, bender. Okay, but that's one part of it. The next 
part, which would be step two. Step one was charting out center of balance. Okay. The next part, which would be step two, is finding out the gain of the bender that you're using, okay, and the pipe size that you're gonna be using it for, okay? Now, if it's an electric bender or a hydraulic bender that can use multiple, uh, you know, size conduits, then you won't be able to do it in one shot, okay? But what you can do is if you're using a certain size or a couple of sizes, then you can do the, you can find out the gain, you know, in one shot, just bend a couple of different sizes, okay? And write them down. Or you can write them down as you go. You know, as you're using one size, you find out the gain, and then when you when you end up using another size conduit, you can find out the gain for that one then and write it down. Now, what I'm telling you here, every time you do this, this is not something that you're just gonna do once. You, it could be, because what I do is I write it down, and I make sure that I have it written down. This way I don't have to do it again, okay? That's the actual trick about doing this, and memorizing it and learning all of these, you know, values and calculations, okay? It's actual practice, okay? Now, step two is finding the game. Right, now to find a gain, what you want to do is get a scrap piece of pipe again, all right, and you're going to bend a 90, okay, a perfect 90, all right. Now what you want to do is when you get that scrap piece of pipe, you want to measure it out, okay. Let's measure this piece here. Let's see what we have. And let's see what we have, okay? Now for the sake of the video, here we have 29 and three quarters, okay? 29 and three quarters is my total length of conduit, all right? So we're gonna need to know that measurement because I'll tell you why after we're done bending, all right? Now it doesn't, this part here, it doesn't really matter. Uh, you don't need to mark it or anything. You can just place it into your bender any way you choose and bend a ninth, okay? You do need to know the length of it before you bend it, okay? So we have 29 and three quarters, all right? So now we're gonna go ahead and bend a 90, a perfect 90, making sure that it's nice and, you know, level, all right? So, we're going to bend this 90 on the floor, okay? I have my level with me, I'm going to keep my toes close by, we're just going to bend a regular 90, alright? Like I said, making sure that it's, it's nice and, and, and level, okay? Now another tip for you beginners. When, you're, when you first bend your 90 and you get past a certain point, what you want to do is come around to the side of it, okay? Holding onto your handle and putting foot pressure from the side. And you can also give yourself a little hand by grabbing onto the stub and helping it up along the foot pressure, okay? Now this is kind of short, so it's a little, it's gonna be a little tougher, but another trick is that you can put your edge that point against the wall so that it doesn't slip, okay? I'm not gonna do that because then I would be out of the video. But let me see. Yes. So we're gonna go ahead and bend it. Okay. And measure. And I have a little more to go. Okay, here is my 90, the next step is 
taking it back to the lab, okay? Which, what I mean is taking it back to the table here, okay? For what? Because now we're gonna actually measure, okay? We started off with 29 and three quarters, okay? 29 and three quarters. Now, let's just write that down, all right? I'm gonna write it down as total length, okay? say here i'm gonna this is how i'm gonna actually do it like as if i was doing it out in the field okay i'm gonna put you know klein bender let's zoom in a little bit okay i'll put klein bender you know and three quarter inch Okay, and we'll put my scrap piece of pipe, just, just as a scrap piece, you know, my scrap was 29 and three quarters. Okay, so now what you wanna do is, to find the gain, is measure both sides, okay? When you see a 90, when you see a 90 degree, let me zoom out. When you see a 90 degree bend, okay, both sides have a name, okay? One side is the stub, the other side is the leg. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna measure the stub and we're gonna measure the leg, okay? Now the way to do that accurately is by getting a straight edge, okay, and putting it on both sides. Okay, so we're gonna go ahead and put a straight edge on this side and we're gonna measure our leg first, okay? So, let me see what we have here. Let's measure our leg. Let's make sure that we're nice and accurate. Okay, and for me over here, I have 17 and a half, okay? Not sure if you can see that, but I have 17 and a half. So we'll go ahead and write that down. Okay, we'll put leg equals 17 and a half. Okay, now we're gonna flip the conduit over, okay, to measure our stuff. Okay, and we could do it just like that. <clears throat> and we'll take the same ruler, making sure that the, it's up, to, up against the straight edge. Okay, wanna make sure that it's up against the straight edge. And we have exactly 15 and an eighth. 15 and 1 eighth. Okay, we have 15 and 1 eighth for our stub. Okay, so now really simple. Really simple, what you want to do is you're going to get a calculator or you can do it in your, in your head if you're a genius or whatever, you just go with math. Okay, we're gonna take the stub and the leg and add them together, okay? So we have 17 and a half, 17.5 plus 15 and an eighth, 0.125. Okay, and that equals 32 and 5 eighths, okay? So now, we're gonna subtract, if you want, you can write that down, okay? Which equals 32 and 5 eighths. Okay, now what you wanna do is, you wanna subtract the beginning total length, what you started out with, which was 29 and 3 quarters. Okay, minus 29 and 3 quarters equals 
two and seven eighths. Okay, two and seven eighths. So that is our gain for this bender for three quarter pipe. Okay, now every size two and seven eighths. Every size pipe is going to be different. Okay, and it can be, you know, there are instances where every bender is different, slightly different. It can be off by an eighth or such. You know, not every bender is the same. Even though it's the same brand and for the same size conduit, sometimes I've come across where some benders, they can have a different gain. Okay, so just so that you know that. So, so our gain is two and seven eighths. Okay, now that's part two okay you just found out the game okay now next is what is we want to find our setback setback and i have videos you know explaining what gain is and what setback is and how to use them to your advantage in conduit bending okay because there's a purpose for us doing all this we're not just doing this for, you know, for fun. There's a reason why we want to find the gain and the setback and to put center bends on to our shoe, okay? So now, to find the setback, we already got all the information that we need, okay? What's the, for the, uh, what's the take up for three quarter conduit on the hand bender? It's gonna be six, right? That's the take up when you want to do stubs right your your deduct is six inches okay so that's what we call the take up so to find the setback what you want to do is you want to you want to actually take your take up which is six inches and you want to subtract it from the gain okay which is 2.875 all right and that's going to leave you with three and an eighth Okay, so our setback equals three and one eighth. Okay, that's our setback. All right, now, like I said, I have videos explaining what and how these, these values can be to your advantage in conduit. Now, these last couple of steps is something that you know i do because of advanced conduit bending it's something that you want you'll want to do as well well this la this next part is something that you're going to want to do which is finding out the radius okay of the bender that you're using why because let's just say you have a 90 right here right let's just say you want to do concentric bends okay and you want to do concentric bends and your first 90 is a 90 a regular 90 with the bender that you're doing well the next concentric bend that's going to come around it you need to know what the first 90 radius is okay and i'm going to show you how to find out what the radius is of this bender okay we're going to get to that in one minute so we're almost there okay so now the steps to finding your radius okay the first step is you want to find the cord okay the cord is kind of like the process of finding the radius i'm not going to get into it too much okay it's it's actually like a, it's you know a section of the circumference okay it's gonna it's it's a way to get the radius but either you know neither here nor there you're trying to find the cord the right word is the cord okay and i'm going to show you what that is and how to find it okay so to find the radius we want to find the cord first okay and how you do that is with a 90 that's already done perfectly a perfect 90 is you want to go ahead and walk the 90 on one side which could be the leg or the stub it doesn't matter right where it starts to bend okay right where it starts to come up off the flat surface and bend you want to mark it okay so we're just going to do it by eye 
and we're gonna say it's right there, okay? And we're just gonna do a nice mark on one flat side, okay? And we wanna go ahead and do it on the other side as well, right where it starts to bend and come up, okay? We'll say it's right around here somewhere, okay? Let me do it a little better than that. All right, now, there are more accurate ways to find out the radius also. You can look them up on YouTube. This is for you when you're out in the field and it's accurate enough that it's gonna give you a good enough value, okay, where it's pretty much accurate, okay? It's not gonna throw off any of your bends or anything, all right? It's a pretty decent way to actually find it out, okay? And it's a quick and easy way as well. Well, okay, now you have your two marks, okay? The start of one bend and the end of another bend, okay? I don't know if you can see those marks, but let me zoom in a little bit. You have one here and you have another here, okay? Now what you wanna do is get your ruler, your tape measure, whatever it is that you're gonna use to measure, okay? And you're gonna go ahead and measure the cord. That's what we're measuring right now, the cord. But you wanna measure it from the center, okay, of the pipes. You wanna measure it from the center, not from the inside, okay, because that, that's not gonna give you the right radius. We want the center line radius, okay, and that's gonna be measured from the center, okay? Now what I usually like to do is I like to put my mark on the one inch, you know, and, and then the second mark wherever it lands and then I'll just take away one inch. Or you could just do it right from the edge of, the, of your tape measure, it doesn't matter. As long as that you're on the center and you're measuring it right. Okay, so I have seven inches, okay? From center of one mark to the center of the other mark, I have seven inches. That's my cord, okay? I can simply write that down here on my piece of paper. My cord equals seven inches, okay? And if I'm out on the field and I'm bending and I'm busy, that's all I have to do. I could just write cord seven inches and I'll get to that later. I'll figure out the radius later. Okay, because at the moment you don't need it. Okay, so but later on if you do need it All you have to do is come back and see that your cord is seven inches. Okay, that's fine Now I'm going to show you how to find the radius with just this measurement Okay, so the the, the formula is sine Of 45 times the cord which in our instance is seven inches equals the radius of this bender that we use to bend this 90 with. Okay, for that particular bender, th that's gonna be the radius. So now, how do you find that out? How do you, how do you work that sine of 45 times, the, times seven? How do we do that? Very simply with a scientific calculator or with your iPhone or Android phone, you want to go ahead and go to the sign button, okay? You want to press that and also type in 45 times the cord. What is the cord? Seven inches, right? You can see that, right? Seven inches. That's our cord that we measured, all right? So we're going to go back to the calculator and type in times seven equals 4.94 in my book that's five so our radius is five inches for this three-quarter climb bender okay that's the radius sorry about that that's the radius for the three-quarter climb bender is five inches Okay, we have a setback of three and an eighth. We have a gain of two and seven eighths. Okay, and we also 
have our bender charted out for center of bends for 30. Um, I have a 10 here, but you can have it for any other bends that you want the center of bends for. Okay, so that's how you put the center of bend onto your bender. You could do it for any actual center, any degree of bend that you want. Okay, and now you know the setback and the gain for this particular bender. You know the radius of this particular bender. Okay, and I have videos showing you how to use all of those values to your advantage. Okay, another one that I haven't really, uh, I didn't really get to, but I will briefly explain it is bending bends. Like, let's just say when you want to do a three point saddle for a 30 degree bend in the center and 15 degree bends on the sides. Okay, how do we do that since we don't have them here? Okay, what you want to do is, just like you did uh, um, the center bend almost, is you want to bend a 15 degree bend, okay? Make sure you mark it like you did, put a mark here, put it on the arrow, bend a 15 degree bend perfectly. You're gonna put it back into your bender, line it up with your arrow, the first mark, okay? And wherever it lands, okay? Let's just say it lands something like like this all right you want to put a mark somewhere where you personally you personally will know when to stop for a 15 degree bend like if this was the bend here and i had to and, and i would actually put a mark somewhere here in the center that that'll tell me okay when the bottom of my pipe gets to this mark right here that i'm gonna put when it gets to this mark, somewhere like right here, I know that I need to stop. And that would be a 15 degree bend. So that's also another trick on how to put, you know, uh, um, marks and, and chart your bender for degree of bends that are not on the actual bender, okay? It's as simple as that, all right? And um, pretty much, that's it you you learn how to chart your bender i'm gonna get into videos also um doing them i'm not really sure how many i'm gonna do i'm gonna see as many as as you guys request but i'm gonna start out with conduitology 101 class one for apprentices i'm gonna start from the beginning as if you've never touched a bender before and i'm gonna see gather them some information and teach you guys how to actually use the bender you know uh, how to actually learn to use the bender you know efficiently and you know how to actually be productive and, and using that bender you know it's it can be a very stressful you know a, a tool to learn especially when you're not really good at math and all that but it can be done you know and also if you have nothing else to do and you want to really learn how to bend conduit i would get onto the internet and go onto youtube and learn trigonometry you know basic trigonometry is going to help you to be a better conduit bender i'm telling you it'll step your game up a lot anyways that's enough for me to uh, and, uh, and pretty much, that's pretty much it. Uh, I, I appreciate all you guys, you know, uh, messages, emails, and texts. I really do. Thank you for all, all, the, all the videos that you guys watch and all the requests that you guys give me. I really appreciate it. And with that, my name is Mel. This is Holmes Law, and I'm out.